Welcome to Mutual of Omaha's Wild Kingdom. I'm Peter Gross, co-host of the original Wild Kingdom with Marlon Perkins and Jim Fowler. When Wild Kingdom debuted in the early 1960s, handling and training animals to perform were common in many zoos. But today, animals like this capuchin monkey serve as wildlife ambassadors for their species in order to educate rather than just entertain. These ambassadors have been hurt in the wild and would not survive without human interaction. Trained professionals bottle feed them and foster the animals back to health. Then the animals become imprinted on their human caregivers. Wild Kingdom showed generations of people the majesty of our animal ambassadors and helped us to care about them. When you care about something, you become committed to saving it. And that's how we all succeed in the Wild Kingdom. So we're gonna sit back, relax, and enjoy Mutual of Omaha's Wild Kingdom, right here on RFD TV. Mutual of Omaha's Wild Kingdom. Mutual of Omaha. Hello, welcome to Mutual of Omaha's Wild Kingdom. When we refer to the Wild Kingdom, we're of course talking about those areas of the world that are still natural and unspoiled, where animals are wild and free. Well, today our story takes place in one of the wildest parts of the Wild Kingdom we've ever seen, the isolated little known country of Bechuanaland in Central Africa. In particular, a vast swamp in northern Bechuanaland called Okavango. Jim, I don't think little Pierre would like it there. No, he probably wouldn't because it's not very good chimp country. It's mainly grass and water and there's not enough forest for him. However, it's one of the most unique swamps in the world. The Okavango River, instead of flowing into the ocean, as most rivers do, flows inland and empties into this vast sea of Kalahari sand forming this lush swamp. In the dry season, it's the only water for miles around and supports one of the richest populations of wildlife in the world. We wanted to explore the entire area, so we split up. Jim started for the swamp from the east, while I came in from the south through the burning hot Kalahari. It's a wilderness of scrub rolling sand dunes and very little water. The fleet-footed springbok lives here. This graceful antelope can survive because he gets moisture from the plants he consumes. So does the gemsbok, a bold and aggressive antelope who has been known to impale a lion on his long rapier-like horns. But apart from the antelopes, few animals can live in the deserts of the Kalahari. To reach the lush green swamplands of the Okavango, I began the long, thirsty journey northward by Land Rover. At the edge of the Kalahari Desert, there are a few water holes. These attract herds of animals, like the sable, and even the ostrich, who seldom needs water. Water also attracts predators who come here to hunt. This male ostrich guarding his young knows the leopard has seen them. Only cunning can save the chicks now. The father acts as a decoy to get the leopard's attention. He pretends he's hurt, luring the cat away from where the young are hiding. The leopard falls for the trick and chases the big bird. The cunning ostrich goes farther and farther from the chick's hiding place. The 
the cat can't catch him, so he goes into hiding. The ostrich gets overconfident and starts back to his young, figuring his enemy's given up. But leopards don't quit. This must be a pretty inexperienced leopard. An older and smarter cat wouldn't have missed twice in a row. Then he sees a herd of sable antelope. He won't attack a whole herd with those wicked horns. But a straggler, and a young one too, that's different. Sable finds a small water hole. This is the cat's chance. He misses. Next time, the sable might not be so lucky. I began the long, dusty drive to the Okavango from Francistown in the east. My first stop was Jari Pan. This is the drinking place for one of the largest concentrations of elephants in Africa. But game ranger Simon Holmes Accord has never seen water so scarce. The elephants must reach deep into the sand to suck up precious water from spring-fed holes worn deep by their trunks. Other elephants dig for water with their giant feet, but find nothing. An elephant needs about 20 gallons of water a day to stay healthy. The situation is serious. Here, the weak must give way to the strong, and even the strong get too little to drink. Far off, I see a youngster all alone. It's obvious he's weak and may have been abandoned. If we hurry, we might be able to catch him and get him to Simon's ranger station, where he can be nursed back to health. It won't be easy. One cry of distress could bring the whole herd thundering after us. If they do, we're prepared. We must be quick and hope he's quiet. If the herd charges now, we can escape without losing him because he's entangled in the net. A bull elephant starts toward us. We've got to move our catch farther away. But this 1,500 pound baby won't budge. Instead, he shows me he won't be pushed around. Surprisingly, the herd doesn't come to his rescue. He's probably an orphan and is in bad shape. You can see it in his eyes. A little tusker like this should still be with his mother. With food and care, he'll soon be well again.
The animals at Jari Pan are a pathetic sight. There's just not enough water to support elephant, warthog, Cape buffalo, and the other animals that come here daily to drink. All too often, smaller creatures like the warthogs are chased off and even buffalo give way to elephant. Only the biggest animals can survive. Before leaving for Okavango, we must get a closer look at the water hole. Maybe there's a way to help the animals. The trouble is the place is alive with wild elephants. The only way to study the situation is to sit downwind of the elephants and gradually move closer when they're not looking. We hope that they won't know what we are. The males decide not to investigate us. Before we can get closer, another group arrives. These are more dangerous. They have more females. And among elephants, at least, the female is deadlier than the male. As I inch closer, I see how fierce competition is. The trunks, like rubber straws, suck up the precious fluid so fast there's hardly time for the water to seep back and fill the hole again. One of them catches me moving. He's uncertain whether to charge or to leave us alone. There's only one thing to do. Show him we're not afraid of him. If we had yielded, he'd have stomped us into the ground. We must enlarge the water hole. Then the other animal get a chance to drink. Fortunately, most of the herd has finished drinking. Finally, he retreats. With the herd a safe distance away, we start to widen and deepen the hole. There'll be plenty of water and drinking room now. We drove on to Okavango while Marlin went by air. As I approach Okavango, I begin to see herds of buffalo. There's water, better grazing, and therefore many more animals here. Big herds of zebra. And wildebeest. In the rivers there are schools of hippos. And the very air itself vibrates with the sound of wings. At last, far ahead, I see our goal, Okavango. I finally arrive at the edge of the swamp, startling a herd of lechwe. Although it's the dry season here, the water level is rising. Water flows into the swamp from far to the north. It then spreads out, creating a paradise for wildlife. All around us, there are animals. Antelopes like the lechwe not far off, wild dog, probably the most vicious predator in Africa. Our sudden appearance startles them and sounds a warning. The 
water here is fresh and pure enough for humans to drink. We drive on as far as we can into this green swamp land. We find excitement right away. Hippo. With Game Scout Sabello, I explore this animal wonderland. Open bill storks take to the air. Just ahead, hippo. Near the bank, a deadly snake glides silently by. And snake-like, a fishing cormorant avoids our canoe. The Okavango is an unspoiled paradise of flora and fauna, the home of strange insects like the water beetle. Unusual birds like the hammercock or hammerhead, aptly named, and dragonflies. Its beautiful plants are a haven for water birds like the lily trotter. Its chicks hide on a lily pad and with big feet walk with safety. Big feet are fine for walking over plants, but sometimes they get tangled in the grass. To explore the Okavango is to see a unique corner of the wild kingdom. The Okavango Swamp, in the heart of a desert, is different from any other swamp in the world. The health insurance company that is different is Mutual of Omaha. My impression of the swamp from the air was confirmed almost as soon as I landed. Animal life was unusually abundant. At the edge of the swamp, I found a large flock of egrets raising their young. What place could be more beautiful for a home? High in the branches, the cattle egrets build their skillfully woven nests of twigs. Some birds are still sitting on eggs. Others have hungry chicks to feed. Traveling farther into Okavango, I see more and more birds. Magnificent cranes that fly with their necks out thrust. Beauty in motion. Other birds fly too. They're not so beautiful. The scavenging vultures. They've found the half-eaten carcass of a buck by the river's edge. That's his carcass. He's also grabbed off one of the vultures. Crocodiles will eat anything. The flock is too busy to notice one of their members is caught. Finishing his meal, the wily crocodile waits for the next unsuspecting victim. All of a sudden, the birds realize that they're in danger. They don't argue. He can have the carcass. Simon and I drove on to Chobe Game Reserve, which borders the swamp. The reserve has about as many animals as the Okavango, and they're just as wild. Barriers here are to control people, not animals. You can't control the actions of a hungry cheetah. Here, 
elephants are in good shape because just below the forest lies the Chobe River with water for all the animals. The magnificent fish eagle with widespread wings for soaring is common here. In cooperation with the reserve, I've come to tag a few in order to study their movements. They're spectacular and colorful eagles. Fish eagles are not only great flyers, they're also one of the noisiest birds of prey in the world. They have long legs and sharp claws for catching fish. A sudden movement catches my eye. There's another one looking for fish. He misses. Now the other one tries. He gets his fish. The trap should be positioned near the spot where the fish was caught. This is about right. It's a simple trap with fish for bait tied to a raft of sticks covered with nylon nooses. They should snare the bird's legs when he grabs the bait. I get as far away as possible, paying out the light nylon line. Now he makes his move. He grabs the bait, loses it. Somehow he escaped the snare. Another eagle spots it. He also loses it when the lion pulls the bait from his talon. I'll have to reset the trap and hope this time the snares hold. A young eagle sees it. Once we get him back to the ranger station, he'll be banded and set free so scientists can learn more about his movements and habits. Trapping eagles takes the skill of an expert like Jim. The Okavango is indeed a unique swamp, not only because of the way it's formed, but because of its combination of tranquility, danger, and rare beauty. Beauty in the form of scenery. Beauty in the form of animal action. Even beauty in the form of sound. Recently, the Batawana tribe, who govern the area, took an unprecedented step towards preserving the Okavango. On their own initiative, they have created the Moremi Wildlife Reserve, thus helping to guarantee the survival of one of the most outstanding wilderness areas in Africa. We hope that Moremi, along with the Chobe Game Reserve to the east, will remain forever so that we'll always know what it means when man refers to the wild kingdom. The company with health insurance for people of all ages has presented Mutual of Omaha's Wild Kingdom.
Like what you saw? Follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube for more exclusive content. And visit our website at wildkingdom.com. Mutual of Omaha. Protect your kingdom.